So I keep forgetting to film an intro every time I do a vlog. I keep diving straight into the vlog and then I get to the end of it and realise that I haven't filmed an introduction. So here I am on Monday, the day this video is going up, filming a last minute introduction for this video I started on Friday. That's how I roll. So I have just spent the weekend reading 17 Mary Kate and Ashley books, specifically the I just dropped them all. <laughs> Specifically, the Two of a Kind series. So in these books, Mary-Kate and Ashley are 11 and 12. I don't mean they're different ages, they're twins. I mean throughout the books they are 11 and then they turn 12. <laughs> don't know if I needed to point that out. So I'm an identical twin and me and my sister have always loved, like, we've always kind of had this weird fascination with other twins, especially when we were younger. And we, for some reason, Mary-Kate and Ashley were the ones that we loved most. So we always read all their books and we played their games. I still have like their PlayStation 1 game somewhere um, and we were obsessed with it. Uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. I vlogged the whole weekend. Um, you can see me completely having a breakdown because I was kind of getting to the end of my tether with these books. <laughs> I enjoyed them when I was a kid, but I think now as a 26 year old, reading 17 of them in one weekend, potentially too much. May maybe just, just a little bit too much. <laughs> so yeah, let's get into it. Here's my vlog of the past weekend reading 17 Mary-Kate and Ashley books in 48 hours. <laughs> Let's go. Hi, this lighting is atrocious. Oh my God. Um, I can't, I can't stay here. <laughs> That'll do, I guess. Um, hi, it's the first day of the vlog. I feel like I'm constantly vlogging at the moment. I'm determined that this vlog will be much less cursed than my previous one, my February one. Uh, if you've watched that video, you'll know what I mean. Come with me to my office. I'm gonna show you, that was really awful, sorry. I'm gonna show you um, the books that I have. My cheeks are so red, my flat is so warm. Here are all of my children's books that I have uh, in my office. So I think for this, I'm gonna specifically focus on the two of a kind books because obviously I've got the most of them. Um, and they were the ones that I remember reading a lot more. The Sweet Sixteen ones and the So Little Time ones, I really didn't read as much. It was the two of a kind ones that I definitely have in my memory. So that's what I'm gonna focus on. So <laughs> come with me this weekend as I read Mary-Kate and Ashley books. I'm at a really weird angle here. <laughs> and I'm gonna see how many I can read in like one weekend. It's Friday evening now, by the way, I should have mentioned that. It's like um, nearly eight o'clock, I think, on Friday evening. So I'm gonna start now. And then this means that by the time I finish on Sunday evening, it will be 48 hours. So um, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> also, my camera battery is about to die, which is perfect timing for starting a vlog. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Okay, it's two hours later and uh, it's now 10 to 10 in the evening. Um, I realised that both my camera batteries were dead so I had to wait for those to charge. So while I was doing that, I made some pasta, I watched a few episodes of The Office and yeah, I had a nice evening. So now it's time to finally talk about Mary-Kate and Ashley. So I am an identical twin and my sister and I have always loved Mary-Kate and Ashley. I think it's just a twin thing maybe, <laughs> which is funny considering the first book in this series is called It's a Twin Thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, we I think we just loved anything to do with other twins. Uh, so like Mary-Kate and Ashley, Tia and Tamara we also loved. I'm kind of remembering more about these books as I look at them. So there's two different types. You have the two of a kind diaries um, and they actually say like diaries on them and they're formatted like diary entries, whereas then the rest of them, I only have four of those, the diary ones, and then the rest of them, so this big stack, they're all just normal novels, they're just regular novels. So the diary ones are the ones that I remember the most, for some reason. I don't remember any of the novel ones. I 
or maybe, I can't remember, I'll probably remember them as I start reading them, but the diary ones I read so much. I think my sister and I have always loved the diary format, so we've also always loved the Georgia Nicholson books where they're also written in like journal format, and it's just a format that we've always really loved, and I think that's maybe why both of us, I think, loved these diaries ones more than the kind of straight novels. So I'm gonna start with these, I think. There's four of them. I'm gonna start reading these. So the first one I'm gonna read is called Calling All Boys. Um, it's the first of the diary ones. So this one says, Dear Diary, when Mary-Kate and I packed up to come to White Oak Academy, I thought boarding school would be like regular school, but it's totally strange. The principal is called a headmistress, seventh grade is called for first form, and my roommate is called, well, I call her weird. Okay, judgmental. And the worst thing is, there's this huge dance coming up. I know, I know, I, Ashley Burke, don't want to go to a dance, but here's the deal, the girls have to ask the boys, and I don't know any. Ashley. Sounds riveting. <laughs> noticing is the sheer number of exclamation marks. Like, Jesus Christ. There's probably approximately 10 exclamation marks per page. I know it's a diary, so it's like they're writing in their own styles, I guess. Um, and they're probably 12 or something. But some sentences even have two exclamation marks after it, and it's um slightly excessive. <laughs> Anyway, I just thought I'd get that out there. I'm like 20 pages in, so I'm just gonna carry on reading. <laughs> I'm getting distracted because I wanna say things. <laughs> Ashley has just met her roommate and she, she's telling her all about her favorite rock groups, rock groups, and one of them is NSYNC. Not particularly a rock group, as far as I know. Um, I just, it made me laugh. I thought that was funny. So I finished calling all boys. So the whole story of this is basically that they've joined, they've gone to this new boarding school because their dad has gone to the Amazon rainforest to study bugs. There's gonna be a dance at the school and there's um, like a, tra a tradition where the girls ask the boys to the dance. One really weird thing is that if they don't have a date at the dance, they have to help like serve drinks and stuff. Like they have to help decorate for the dance and then they have to serve drinks and snacks if they don't have a date. So they can't just go with their friends. If you don't have a date, like if you don't have a boy as a date, you can't even enjoy the dance. You have to serve drinks. <laughs> Ashley gets a date with this hot guy from the boys school. She, there's a bit where she's just like, I really wanted to give him a huge hug, but this was only our first date. <laughs> so, oh, it's cute, really, that she can't hug him because you can't hug on a first date. <laughs> these these are going to be so lighthearted and fun. I can't wait to just read these all weekend. Um, so that was the first one. That was very entertaining. I am going to move straight on to the second one now. It's nearly 11 o'clock. And I think I'll read one more before I go to bed. Um, these are just, they're just so fun. <laughs> the second one, where am I? This one, number 10. Uh, it's called Winner Take All. We have this picture. <laughs> Again, how long is this one? This is about the same length, like 100 pages-ish. So uh, I should see you in about half an hour or so. <laughs> That's another one done. Uh, winner Take All. <laughs> I can't help. I can't help. Every time I look at this cover, I just go, Does it just, what is this pose? I'm kind of excited to see how many of these I get through, because if each one only takes me like half an hour to read and I'm doing this all weekend, then yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how many I'm going to read. I think I'm going to make a little graphic now before I go to bed. I'm going to make a graphic so I can post it on my Instagram story, just so I can kind of um, keep track of all the ones I'm reading, because on my story on Instagram, I keep track anyway of all the books that I read. Um, and I don't want to include these on my normal tracker thing that I use for like the rest of my books, because it's just gonna 
fill it up with Mary Kate and Ashley. So I think I'm gonna make a separate Instagram tracker. This one was interesting. Um, it's uh, more drama than the last one, if you could call it drama, teenage drama. Um, Mary Kate wants to join the softball team and she manages to get on the team um, but Ashley is part of the school newspaper and she is like the gossip columnist for the newspaper and she ends up writing a story about Mary Kate that really embarrasses her and then they don't speak to each other for ages and they're just like oh my god nothing's ever gonna be the same between us now I've ruined our friendship and like Mary Kate calls her her ex-sister um, don't think it quite works like that, but she literally disowns her as a sister because she embarrassed her so much by writing about her and a boy that she fancies in the school newspaper. <laughs> I love a bit of teen drama. So it ended with their dad decided to come back from the Amazon rainforest because he finished his thing, he finished his research early because he was missing them so much. It's ended on a massive cliffhanger. <laughs> Mary Kate wants to go home, she doesn't want to be in the boarding school anymore, but Ashley wants to stay and they're going to be split up for the first time in their lives. Oh, the drama. Um, so I, <laughs> I kind of do want to go on to the next one. I said I was only going to read one more before bed. I think I might go and make this graphic quickly. Okay, done. Um, it looks like this. Um, I've kind of put all the book covers. I'll kind of like use it as a bingo board checklist type thing and I will like mark each book as I've read it. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely, I'm still going to count these though towards my Goodreads goal because they're still books. Why not? I was doing that with my Jacqueline Wilson books as well in my, uh, in that vlog. I was including those too because they're still books. So <laughs> I'm still going to be including them like in the total number of books that I read uh, for the year. So this should be a nice little boost. So yeah, now that that's done, I am going to get into bed. I think read one more maybe before bed. I'm not sure if I'll vlog again tonight now because I just can't be bothered lugging my camera into my bedroom. So I will update you in the morning with whatever I manage to read now before bed. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Morning, well, afternoon actually. It's uh, midday, I think. Yeah, it's quarter past 12. I have just had a morning of reading in bed, which has been excellent. I'm now five books through, which is great. Like, considering I only started last night, um, I've read five books so far, and I have, I think, 17 altogether. So, let's see if I can get through all of them this weekend. That would be incredible. Um, I can't see why I shouldn't considering it's only 12 o'clock, like it's only midday on Saturday and I'm going until tomorrow night. So uh, yeah, let's see how many I get through. Um, I might also get fed up with them though. So if I do get so fed up with them that I'm just like, I can't read this anymore, <laughs> then I'll see. Let's quickly talk about what I've read so far. So I have read three of the diary ones. The third one that I read was P.S. Wish You Were Here and it was after Mary Kate has left Ashley to go home uh, from White Oak Academy and she's kind of left Ashley there on her own and they're kind of, um, kind of wishing that, obviously by the title, wishing that each other was with them. Um, but they have these communication issues where they think that they haven't been contacting each other for like two weeks, but it was like an email server error and none of their emails were coming through. I don't know. So I then realized I was gonna go on to the fourth diary one, which is Holiday Magic, which is the one I'm desperate to read because it was one that I always remember was my favorite. I realized that they do fit into the normal numbering of the rest of the books. But for some reason they just decided that three random ones were going to be diary ones rather than just kind of straight novels. So I thought rather than read everything completely out of order, I decided to go back to the beginning and I read number one and two. I started number one last night and then finished it and read number two this morning. Yeah, I feel like doing it this way is definitely going to make a lot more sense actually reading them in order uh, because in nine to eleven their dad has gone on this research trip with their babysitter, Carrie. But in the, at the start of the series, 
Carrie is only just introduced. So I was like, okay, yeah, I need to actually read these in order. <laughs> it would probably make sense. It's gonna be weird because I do have numbers missing. So it's gonna be weird to kind of uh, see what happens where I'm missing chunks. But honestly, with books like this, I don't think it matters <laughs> if you miss little bits of story. It's hardly gonna be difficult to use your imagination to piece together what has happened in the missing ones. So yeah, that's fine. So I'm already quickly realizing that I definitely prefer the diary format and like the first person format to the novels, which are like third person. Um, and they're not about White Oak Academy because they only start going to White Oak in number nine. And when I go right back to the beginning, they're still just at home with the dad. And I'm just finding the stories a lot more, not boring. I just don't find them as interesting as the White Oak stories. I just find them a lot more interesting. I think there's a lot more characters that are more interesting rather than just, there's chapters where it talks about, cause their dad is a college professor. There's chapters where it like shows him teaching in the college and like meeting Carrie, this babysitter. And I think there's gonna be this whole love interest story thing between the babysitter and the dad. I'm kind of thinking I want to try and race through the books up to number nine as fast as I can because then I know that from then on they're in this boarding school for I think maybe the rest of them. So yeah, five down, 12 to go. <laughs> um, if I've read five by now and I have a 12 left, I've still got like the whole of today and then the whole of tomorrow. I can definitely do this, I think. And of course, it wouldn't be one of my reading vlogs if I didn't have a smoothie. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Another one down. The Sleepover Secret was probably the least interesting one so far. <laughs> it's just them talking about kissing boys for 86 pages. <laughs> so one thing that I've absolutely never been interested in since I was like a teenager is the whole, oh my God, I've never kissed a boy thing. I mean probably because I was gay and I didn't know until now, but um, <laughs> I, even so, romance has never been a thing I've ever been interested in. So like, you know, the thing where teenagers are always just like worried about when they're gonna have their first kiss or they get to a certain age and they haven't been on a date with someone yet. I literally never had that. I've never been interested. It's funny to read it when they're like 11, they're literally 11 years old and worrying about the fact that they don't have boyfriends and they haven't kissed a boy yet. It's just, it's so funny. So, six down, 11 to go. So this is where I start to have gaps now. So I've just read number three. I don't have number four, so, num so next will be number five. So next I'm on to number five, which is to snoop or not to snoop. Um, so yet again, because I'm a failure, it's 10 to 11 in the evening. I haven't read anything since I last updated you. I just found out that um, Kayla, Books and Lala, is doing a stream tonight. So I, for the past, I don't even know how long. Okay, it's actually been 40 minutes now. I've been watching her stream instead. <laughs> if you can hear voices in the background, it's on my TV. <laughs> um, so while they're chatting, I'm gonna attempt to read some Mary Kay and Ashley because it's hardly something that I really need my full attention on. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm gonna watch the rest of this stream and see if I can read while they're chatting. Let's see if I can do this ultimate multitasking. So you know what's getting really frustrating <laughs> as I'm reading multiple of these books, like a lot of these books in one go. Every single book has a recap. It's such a sort of general high level recap of everything that's been going on. So it's just like, it mentions their dad and then who Carrie the babysitter is and how Carrie the babysitter came to be their babysitter and the relationship with her and their dad. And it's, it recaps it in every single book. And when you're reading all of the books, one after the other, and you get the same recap in every single book, I'm going slightly insane. <laughs> Like, I'm literally reading almost a word for word recap in every book. <laughs> um, so this book's slightly problematic already with, with them creepily looking at people with the telescope. They've already spied on their friend Max in his house or wherever, I don't even know. 
And he was like looking at a picture of a girl and then when he sees them next, they're just like, oh, you finally see that girl? When he's like, how do you know? And they were like, we were spying on you through our telescope. He doesn't seem phased. <laughs> if someone told me that they saw something that I was doing through my window because they were watching me through a telescope, I'd be very freaked out. But he was just not phased at all. He just went into defensive mode, talking about how he doesn't like this girl. Like, no, what are you talking about? I'm finding the more I get through these, the more I'm scanning them. All I want to do is get to White Oak Academy. <laughs> That's all I want. I really don't care about their home lives anymore. I genuinely don't really care about them, because all they talk about is boys that they fancy. And that's it. So I desperately want to get to the White Oak Academy books. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I can do this. <clears throat> okay, finished. It's now 1am. Uh, I've just finished to snoop or not to snoop. And it was possibly one of the weirdest ones so far. Um, so as they were snooping, they looked into the house of Mrs Baker, who... Used to be their babysitter before Carrie, but they didn't like her because she's old. It's pretty much the only reason. Well, they were snooping on her. She also... Mrs Baker has a boyfriend called Mr Fillmore, and she only calls him Mr Fillmore. She's just like, my boyfriend, Mr Fillmore. It's very strange. But she is in her house, and they are watching them through their telescope, as you do. And they see that she like, through the window, like, lifts a knife up to him and then he disappears or something and they're just like, oh my god, Mrs Baker killed Mr Fillmore. So then they spend half the book trying to work out this mystery of whether their old babysitter is a murderer. She isn't a murderer. They were just arguing over knitting. I already kind of feel like reading so many of these in one go is making me lose the will to live slightly because I'm so sick of reading about them just talking about fancying boys. It's literally all these books are about, man. I don't know how much more of this I can take, honestly. Um, oh, another thing that I noticed as well, I was going to mention it earlier and I completely forgot, is one thing that is driving me slightly mad is the fact that they... A, keep talking about the fact that they're twins. They constantly bring it up that they're twins. There's a thing that they do constantly throughout these where they're just like, oh, you know we're twins. We, it must be a twin thing. Or when they, they're talking to people, they're like, oh, it must just be because we're twins. It's driving me insane because like me and my sister, I don't think we've ever, literally ever, mentioned to each other that we are twins because we know that fact. We know we are twins. I bet if you have regular siblings, they don't constantly say, oh, you know, it's because we're siblings. It's because you're my brother. So that's irritating. And then also in the dialogue, when they're talking to each other, they constantly mention each other's names. So it's just like, Ashley, have you heard about this? No, I haven't, Mary-Kate. Of course I haven't. Oh, Ashley, they constantly, like, when they're having a conversation just with each other, no one else is involved. And again, that's another thing that I don't think literally ever happens in normal conversation. So, this is how much I've read so far. I've read two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven down, ten to go. Oh, that's another thing. Swapping being each other. They pretend to be each other in... Pretty much every single book, it happens at least once in every book. That's another thing that me and my sister have never ever done in our entire lives. It's such a fictional trope, I think, for twins to pretend to be each other. Mary-Kate and Ashley aren't even identical, even though they look identical, they're not identical. So one thing I did appreciate is that when their dad sees them trying to be each other, he instantly knows that they're the right person like he's instantly like what are you doing stop doing this which is good because I've read twin things in the past where they have swapped like identities like they're pretending to be each other and even their parents and best friends and stuff don't realize it which I think is dumb like if me and my sister ever swapped places my mum would instantly know she wouldn't look at my sister and be like 
don't think she's me because she's our mother like that wouldn't happen <laughs> that would absolutely not happen i think i'm gonna get into bed take this with me and read another one and then i'll have nine to try and read by tomorrow evening i'll see you tomorrow good night <laughs> sunday morning um i managed to read one more before bed last night um i read two's a crowd and they were just fighting because Ashley gets a friend and Mary-Kate doesn't like that. <laughs> she doesn't like that Ashley has another friend. I am now going to move on to, well not now, I need to record the podcast um, at 11. It's quarter to 11 now and I'm doing a couple of podcast episodes at 11. Um, but after that I'm going to go straight on to number eight which is Let's Party. I'm very excited about this one <laughs> and you shall see why. Ashley has a great idea. She's going to have a surprise party for her best friend, Jennifer, but Ashley gets a surprise when she finds out her sister, Mary-Kate, is giving a party for her best friend, Amanda, on the same night. I didn't know about these friends. These are suddenly best friends that I didn't, they weren't best friends a book ago, interesting. But the biggest shocker of all is the one that dad has for both of the girls, one that's going to change their lives big time. I know what that is. Our gals are going to White Oak Academy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm going to record the podcast now. Also maybe need to go to the shop if it doesn't start pouring with rain, but the sky is very black. And then I don't think I have any plans for the rest of the day. So I'm going to try and read the rest of these books if I can. I've got like nine left and I've read eight so far. So... I don't know if I can read nine in a day, but let's, let's see, let's see what I can do. Okay, I'm done. Recording is done. Let me turn this so I can actually see. Um, that was fun. That took a little while. It's now, what's the time? 20 past two. So that's taken a good couple of hours. I thought it would take at least two hours. It's taken like three. We did have a nice chat though as well. That was fun. Um, I am now starving, but I have no food. So I think I'm gonna go to the shop, edit and upload my podcast episode. And then I think I'm done for the day. So I can read for the rest of the day. So it's like five o'clock now. I said I wanted to get everything done by five, but I haven't. <laughs> I'm gonna now edit my episode that I need to put up and then I will uh, see you when I start reading again. Update. Uh, podcast is done, it's up, it's posted on Patreon. I really, really need to flip in focus now on reading for the rest of the night because I desperately want to read all these books. I still have all of these left. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a late night, who knows? I have many snacks, I have pizza that I'm about to cook. It's half seven in the evening already, so let's see, let's see what happens, see if this is actually possible. Um, I'd love to try and read as many as I can, so let's do this. I'm not gonna watch anything on TV, I'm not gonna watch The Office while I eat my tea, because I know I will sit there until 10 o'clock and just watch The Office. So I need to cook some food and read while I eat. Alexa, 12 minute timer. 12 minutes, starting now. So I've got a couple of slices of pizza left. I'm almost done. But I've just finished number eight. Our gals are off to White Oak Academy. I'm very confused though, because their dad sits down to tell them that they're going. But he's like, oh, you know that boarding school we talked about? The one that we visited last summer and we applied for? Well, they've accepted your places. And I was reading it like, you what, you what, you visited? You applied? What? What? <laughs> I didn't know any of this and I was like, okay, I must have skipped a book. I've skipped a couple, but I can't imagine in one of those books. Like, they're talking about how 
six months ago they went to visit. I don't know, maybe I have missed it in one of the books that I haven't read because I don't have it, but that just really confused me. I was like, oh, okay. I thought they were gonna like find out that they're applying or something, but nope. He was like, oh, this boarding school we've already talked about, you're going. I have read all of these so far, but I have these to go. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight left. Say each one takes me, I'd say what each one takes me about half an hour because they're super short and I just, I'm, I kind of scan them. If I stay up till midnight reading consistently, I can get through all of these. Maybe I can do it. Maybe I can. Okay, I'm gonna finish my pizza and I'm gonna move on to the next one, which is called The Cool Club. Okay, so you know I said yesterday there's a ton of exclamation marks, like excessive exclamation marks. On this double page, there are 19, 19 exclamation marks. On this, 19 exclamation marks on this one double page. <laughs> I am genuinely so sick to death of these books just being about them fancying boys. <laughs> I'm so bored of it. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going insane. <laughs> Every single book is them just talking about who they fancy and who they like and who likes who and who has dumped who even though they were never actually together and someone's invited someone else to the dance instead of them and... That's all it is. <laughs> oh my god. I'm getting... Very bored of them now. <laughs> oh, I have three left though. Three. I can do this. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna try and carry on. Three left. I can do this. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> it's 25 to one and I don't think I can take much more. So the blurb of this next one. Mary Kate has a crush on a boy named Jordan. A huge crush, but she's she's too shy to tell him how she feels. So Ashley starts writing love letters for Mary Kate and sending them to Jordan. She is thrilled when Jordan writes back to Mary Kate. His letters are so sweet and funny and romantic. Uh oh, Ashley can't help it, but she's falling for Jordan too, big time. <sighs> I can't. I can't. I can't take much more of just reading about twelve-year-olds fancying boys. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. I don't remember these books being so boy obsessed. I really don't. I mean, maybe because I didn't read 17 of them in one go. I usually probably only read like maybe one or two at once. <laughs> I'm having a slight breakdown. <laughs> I can't take much more. I only have two left. <laughs> two. And one of them is the one that I've been looking forward to reading most because it's the one that I remember being my favourite as a kid. And I've left it till last because I wish this thing would focus. <laughs> I don't think it likes the light. Um, I've been leaving this one till last because, um, yeah, it's the one that I remember reading most as a kid, so I've been leaving it. Obviously, I mean, it's the last one. It's number 38, so it's the last one I have anyway, but I've been kind of leaving it till last so I power on through so I can get to this one because I remember really liking it. If I read this one and it's literally just about them obsessing over stupid boys again, I'm gonna be so mad. <sighs> okay, I can do this. <laughs> Two more left. Oh, let's read about some stupid boys again. <laughs> Done, I think I just scanned this entire thing in like 20 minutes or even less. Um, I literally didn't care about a single page of this whatsoever. There were whole pages where I was literally like skimming the words and in my head I was going don't care, don't care, I don't care, I don't care about this, I don't care. <laughs> I've got one left and it's been, can I say my most anticipated? <laughs> uh, it's been the one that I've been looking forward to reading most. So I'm gonna go and get into bed. I'm so uncomfortable on this sofa. I've been here for hours barely moving, so I'm so done. <laughs> so done. I'm done. 17 books in one weekend. I think this was, yet again, my favourite one of all of the books. My opinion of it hasn't changed, clearly, since I loved it years ago. And you know what? <laughs> I think I realised the reason why I like it so much 
is because there's actually a story and a plot and there isn't one single mention of fancying boys. <laughs> there's not one single mention <laughs> of boys that they like. Yeah, I, it's entirely focused on actual plot rather than just fawning over boys. <sighs> That's so funny. Um, anyway, right, it's um, now, it's five to two in the morning. <laughs> I'm so tired. Um, so I'm going to go to sleep and then I'll wrap up tomorrow. I definitely have some things to say about these books. So I'll try and remember all my thoughts tomorrow and wrap up. Um, but I've done it. Good night. <laughs> So I did it! I read 17 books in one weekend um, and I almost lost my mind. So I, I'm tr sorry, I'm trying to stack up these books neatly. <laughs> uh, right, yes. So I almost lost my mind. I got so bored of 12 year olds talking about the boys that they fancy because I really didn't give a damn. But it was fun! <laughs> it was fun. Um, it was great for nostalgia. I definitely think I enjoyed them more when I was the target audience rather than a 26 year old woman. It was still fun to see the ones that I remembered, the ones that I maybe didn't remember as much. There's definitely ones that I don't think I even read. I have some things to say. I have just spent like 10 minutes writing up a load of notes on my phone um, because I have lots of thoughts about these books. Um, so the first thing, I've mentioned this already as I've been reading them, but it's like they're almost codependent. Like they can't do anything without each other. And then as soon as one of them starts doing something without the other, so if one of them has a friend that the other one doesn't have, or they um, wanna plan a party or something, there's so many things that they do without each other. The other one of them is like really offended that they haven't involved the other. But then I was also kind of thinking about whether me and my twin sister were like that when we were 11 or 12. And actually, I think we possibly were. <laughs> so the more I think about it, maybe that's not that weird because me and my sister have always been really close as well. Maybe on second thought, that actually isn't that weird but for some reason it really annoyed me in the books. <laughs> so as I was saying throughout the vlog, I was like really waiting for all the White Oak Academy stories um, rather than their really boring home life. And as much as I was complaining about the later books because they were all about boys, I still definitely preferred those stories once they went to the boarding school. Um, I think there's just more characters to make it interesting than just like in the ones where they're at home. There's their dad, Carrie the babysitter, the girls, and then they've got like two recurring best friends. And all of the stories kind of re revolve around them. But when they go to board boarding school, they've got the teachers, there's all the rest of the kids, There's they've got roommates, there's people who live in their dorm, they've got um, all the different friendship groups within the boarding school. Um, you've got also then there's like Harrington Boys School down the road. So they've got their cousin Jeremy and then there's all the boys from the other school as well. There's so many characters and also they had so much possibility for like other storylines as well, like more interesting storylines. Whether they actually use this to their advantage, the writers, is um, another story. They still just gave us endless stories about fancying boys. One thing that is weird is like the stories are crazy and unbelievable, especially in a school setting. <laughs> like the one that I said is my favorite, this one. They have like this big restaurant thing. They have to, the people in their dorm have to run their own restaurants and they have to order their own food in and cook their own meals and everything. They have no teacher supervision, like no teacher support. It's literally just the students do it on their own and they need to actually order everything to a budget and make sure they're cooking enough for at least 20 reservations. You have to remember these girls are literally 12 years old. 
and they're like cooking food for 30 people and ordering stuff from suppliers to stick within a certain budget. Mary-Kate at the same time is like volunteering at a restaurant where she's doing an actual job. She's doing a proper waitressing job, but she's volunteering and she's 12. That's definitely surely going against child labour laws. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think reading them as a 26 year old, I can see that as a kid, you might read them and be like, oh my God, this is so fun. I want to go to this school. But when you're an adult, you're just concerned about child labor. <laughs> Another thing that I wanted to mention is characters being introduced r randomly. So at the start of a book, it will mention a new friend or like a new person at the school that has never been mentioned before. As in, it'll just suddenly say, Ashley's friend, this person. Uh, and I've never heard of that person before. And it's not even due to the fact that I have gaps in my like book collection. It's just, it would be like a consecutive book. So it would be like the next book in the series and I read the previous one and suddenly it's like Ashley's friend, Kyla or whatever. And it would be like, sorry, who? <laughs> who is that now? I've never heard of that person before. <laughs> Um, and also then the character development is all over the place. So like they'll go off a boy in one book and then the following book they'll be pining for the same boy again. Or in the previous book they'll realise that a popular girl they were trying to befriend isn't worth their time. But then in the next book it'll be like her best friend Jennifer. And in the previous book Jennifer was this arch enemy. And it's really weird. It's like so weird to wrap your head around every time you start a new book because you're like, right, who's friends with who now? Who is no longer enemies when five minutes ago they were arch enemies? And then finally, uh, the, the other thing that was very concerning <laughs> is the weird relationship between their dad and Carrie, the babysitter. So Carrie is 26 and she is one of one of his students, he's a college professor, and she's one of his students in college, and she becomes the babysitter. But then they have this really weird, vague relationship that isn't really explored, where Carrie keeps talking about, like in her thoughts, she keeps thinking about how this Kevin, their dad, is really dateable, and he's really hot when you look at him up close, and really weird stuff considering he's her professor. But it's never explored, like it's never talked about. Um, at one point, and again, going back to the weird changing timelines, I think it's maybe where I skipped a couple of books or maybe one book in between, but they, there was loads of stuff about how they went to her apartment and she had like a rooftop apartment and stuff. But then a couple of books later, they talk about how she's living in their basement and she has like an apartment in their basement. So I was very confused by that, but I think that's maybe where I skipped a book or something. I don't know, but even so, that's weird that she like moved in with them because then that makes the relationship between them even more complicated and weird and vague, but still not explored. And they, I don't know, maybe I missed something, but then like she ends up going to the Amazon with him as his assistant. And I just find the whole thing very strange where she's his student and she's 26 years old. I remember I used to think Carrie was really old, but now that I am also 26, I'm like, no wait, she's my age and she's living with her college professor. And then kind of related to that, there's this whole thing where she is there looking after them and one of, they order pizza and one of the other students delivers the pizza and sees them together and he's just like, he obviously jumps to conclusions like, oh my god, Carrie's dating our professor. So he starts talking to, like, talking to the rest of the students about it and they're all sort of berating them on it. And there's a brief thing where they're talking about whether she is getting better grades because of dating the professor. But that's never taken higher, like it's never taken further. In real life, if that is an actual concern and people are thinking that a student could be dating the professor and getting better grades because of it, surely that would definitely be investigated. <laughs> um, even if they realize that she was, she is just a babysitter. I'm pretty certain that would be investigated on a higher level. But again, there's, 
there's no sort of consequences for anyone's actions in these books. Like, the twins get away with flipping murder and nothing has consequences. <laughs> it's so strange. So yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I could think of to say. There's probably more that I thought of as I was reading, but overall, I had a fun time reading all these. The, it was funny realising that the book that I always loved as a kid is the one that doesn't have any talk of them liking all the boys and trying to get boyfriends and dates and stuff. The book that I always loved most is the one that doesn't have any of that. <laughs> this has done wonders for my Goodreads goal. I've added 17 books to my Goodreads goal in one weekend, so that's been excellent. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If Were you ever a Mary-Kate and Ashley fan? Have you read any of their books? Whether it's like the two of a kind ones or any of their other series, like their older series? Um, let me know in the comments, let's chat. Tell me if you were ever a Mary-Kate and Ashley stan. And uh, yeah, I will see you soon for a new video. <laughs> Bye.